Well, it is our distinct honor and privilege to welcome our guest preacher today is Pastor Josh Laxton. Now, some of you are like, yeah, I remember him. He preached in the Christmas series when we were online. Because here's what happened. We, we had had beautiful weeks of, of weather just leading up in that Christmas series, and we've been meeting, and we invited Josh to come and preach. And that particular Sunday, it was like the heavens just opened up and rain just came down in a deluge. So we had to move indoors, and so we had to worship indoors. But we told Josh, you have to come back to experience the great joy of worshiping as one body in our courtyard. And so guess what? We invited Josh back, and look what the Lord did. He gave Josh a bonus day. So Josh, would you come on up here? Uh, Josh, as many of you might know, is a, he's a wonderful man of God. He is a loving husband, faithful father, and faithful follower of Jesus. Josh comes to us from the Billy Graham Center in Wheaton, Illinois. And I can't think of a better song to lead into Josh because that seems to be Josh's ministry. For the sake of the world, light a fire in me. And this is a man that's carrying that out all throughout his life. So this morning, as I pray for Josh, will you pray silently with me? So Lord Jesus, uh, we humble ourselves. We're so thankful, Lord, that today you brought Josh to us. And we thank you, Lord, for the message that you've laid on his heart. And so, Lord, as Josh is speaking and sharing from his heart and your eternal word, Lord, we pray that our hearts would be moved and that we would leave this place changed because you were in our midst. We thank you, Jesus, and all this we pray. Amen. So can you welcome Josh for us? Well, thanks, Pastor Sean. Let's just put it this way. In Wheaton, Illinois, you could, well, I guess we could be outside. Uh, you'd be in parkas, though. <laughs> uh, but it is so good to be with a Shoreline Church. It is such a joy and honor. I spent the entire week here getting to know the staff, uh, the L team, some of the members. I mean, just as, I mean, you are the salt of the earth kind of people. I want to also welcome those of you who are connecting with us online. Uh, let's just give it up for those who are connecting with us online this morning. So good. And then those in the parking lot, I, I didn't know you could do this, but I wanted to do it in the first service, but because you did it, hey, will you honk if you love Jesus? That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to do that. So, Sean, you gave me the permission. Thank you so much. Uh, but it is so good for you all to be here with us this morning. If you have your Bible, go ahead and turn with me to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Uh, we're going to uh, be looking particularly in uh, verses 25 through 30. Now, as you know, we're in this series. Pastor Kevin has been in this series called... To all. Now, if I knew I was going to be part of this series, I probably would have wrestled Pastor Kevin for John 13. I think I, could t I, think I can take him. Uh, but I love John 13 and the picture that we see there where Jesus washes the disciples' feet. I mean, that really is the kind of leader and follower of Jesus that I want to be. I really do want to roll up my sleeves and get down into the mess and the muck of people's lives and encourage them and support them and serve them. And so you couldn't have had a better passage and then obviously couldn't have had a better pastor walk through that passage uh, leading and teaching us what does it mean to serve like Jesus. And so as I was praying about uh, today, and what the Lord would put on my heart, I was led to Philippians 2 because I think we see a living example of the kind of service that Pastor Kevin has talked about the last couple of weeks. You know, when I think about service, I don't think about the front people. I don't think about the people on the platform. I don't think about those that you would know. I actually think of those lurking behind the scenes. I think about those whose name you do not know. Like, for instance, if I had a screen with me today and I put a picture of Mickey Mouse, we wouldn't need to have his name, Mickey Mouse. You would just know who Mickey is. If I put up a picture of Walt Disney, most of you would say, that's Walt Disney. But if I were to put up a picture of Roy Disney... You might say to yourself, well, that person favors Walt, but I just don't know who that is. 
And then if I put up a picture of Ub Iwerks, you would probably go, who's that crazy looking dude? But if you've heard or read the Disney story, you would know how, how important Roy and Ub were to Walt. Roy gave Walt his first $200 to really get him going. And then Ob is the one who brought Mickey to life. So Walt Disney wouldn't have been the man he was without Roy and Ob. And then the Walt Disney Incorporation wouldn't be the company it is today without the servants of Roy and Ob. You see, our culture, we love the spotlight. We love to celebrate those who are in the spotlight. But but it's those who are behind the scenes that make people, make leaders, make organizations, make businesses what they are. Now, every message, I always have a main point. So let me ask you this. Are you ready for the main point? All right. If you are, say, I am. Here's the main point this morning. Behind any great movement are sacrificial partners engaged in humble service. Behind any great movement are sacrificial partners engaged in humble service. Like if you you read history... All the movements of the world. It wasn't the real, it wasn't the leaders that led really those movements. It was the people behind them, behind the leaders that carried the movement forward. Christianity being one of them. Like if you study the history of Christianity, sure, there there are famous people and famous teachers that we would know, famous pastors that we would know. But it really, it really wasn't those leaders. That really was behind the movement. It was ordinary believers sold out to Jesus. They're the ones that carried the gospel forward. And as we look at Epaphroditus, we're going to see a sacrificial partner engaged in humble service. I actually have a word. I've I've coined this this kind of a, a word to describe people like Epaphroditus. Here's the word, subtle superstars. Turn to your neighbor and say, subtle superstars. See, those who are sacrificial, engaged in humble service, they're what I would call subtle superstars. They're not the superstars. They're the subtle superstars. Like, you wouldn't know that they're superstars looking at them because you might not know their name. You might not know what they do. But subtly, they really are the ones who are the superstars. And so Philippians 2, verse 25, let me read those verses this morning. Here's what the apostle Paul writes. He says, but I think it necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother co-worker, fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and he almost died, but God had mercy on him. And not only on him, but also on me. Therefore, I would, have had, I would have had sorrow upon sorrow. I am all the more eager to send him to you so that when you see him again, you may be glad and may have less anxiety. So then welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor people like him because he almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life to make up for the help you yourselves could not give me. Will you go with me to the Lord in prayer Uh, Jesus, we pray that uh, you would move in our midst. We pray that you would do something great in our midst this morning. Father, we know that when the world was created, it was created by your word. And so now with those of us who are part of your new creation, would your word go to work in our life, shaping and molding us and conforming us more into the image of of Jesus. I pray for those who are far from you, who may be searching, may be seeking this morning. Spirit, would you, would you speak to their hearts? Would you draw them even closer to Jesus this morning? For we pray it in our King's name, Jesus. 
Amen. So what I want to do this morning, I want to give us five characteristics of subtle superstars. Five characteristics of subtle superstars. And as we walk through these characteristics, I want you to ask yourself, am I a subtle superstar? Am I a subtle superstar? So here we go. Characteristic number one. People see you as part of something greater than yourself. People see you as part of something greater than yourself. And we see this at the very beginning because Paul's going to give five descriptions of Epaphroditus. The first description is my brother. And so when Paul looks at Epaphroditus, he sees Epaphroditus as part of the family of God, something bigger than Epaphroditus. And then he says, my fellow co-worker. It's interesting that that word fellow co-worker is the Greek word synergos, which is where we get our word synergy. And so when Paul looks at Epaphroditus, he's like, man, he, he's my synergy. He's beside me, working with me. He's part of the body. He's part of the ministry. Like he's my fellow worker. We're in harmony with one another. And then he also says uh, that he is a fellow soldier. And that Epaphroditus, he's someone who fights side by side with Paul. Now, why in the world do we even have this army, this military language? Because we are part of, we are caught up in this cosmic war. Uh, God had created the world for his glory. He had created mankind in his image to reflect his glory, to reflect his characteristics, his attributes, his nature in all spheres of life. Man sinned because they were tempted by Satan to rob God of his glory, to thwart his mission of having his glory being reflected through humanity. Well, from then on, there's this now cosmic war where Satan is trying to rob God of his glory, thwart him of his mission, while God is pursuing mankind with grace and love and redemption, drawing people to himself. And God is on mission to redeem a people for himself. And so when Paul looks at Epaphroditus, he sees him not only as a brother, not only as a co-worker, but as this military soldier armed side by side with him, fighting the good fight of taking the good news that Jesus is in the process of redeeming and restoring all things. That That was Epaphroditus. And then Paul says he's also a messenger and and minister. That word messenger is apostle. It's where we get our word missionary. It means sent one. And so here's what we get from that is that the church at Philippi wanted to send Epaphroditus to minister along Paul in the mission. And so that's the reason why Epaphroditus is this sent one. But then that idea of minister is this priestly language where not only is he sent, he has been sent to serve just as a priest would. And so we get this picture early on about Epaphroditus is that he's this individual, he's this believer who is part of something greater than himself. Now, in our culture, in our business world, there are businesses that get this when it comes to their employees. Like Starbucks calls all of their employees uh, uh, partners. And then Disney, uh, they call all of their employees cast members. It doesn't matter if you work at the Disney outlet store or Disneyland or Disney World or you go on a Disney cruise. Every single person that works for Walt Disney is considered a cast member. Now, why would they do that? Is because they want every single person working in that organization to realize they are part of a greater story than themselves. Now, I want you to think about it in terms of the church. Do you realize that if you are a follower of Jesus, you are part of the greatest most ginormous body and mission on planet earth in the history of mankind. Like that's what you're part of. That's what I'm part of. That's what we are part of. And what, hap- what has happened, I believe, in our culture is that we have allowed our, our culture's mentality of membership to seep into the body and the family of Christ. 
Now, I know you got a Costco. You know how I know you got a Costco? Because Pastor Kevin had to go to Costco earlier this week. He's like, I got to run up to Costco and get a few things. And I'm like, whenever we go to Costco or Sam's Club, uh, you don't have one of those, but it's just like uh, Costco. Uh, It's not a quick trip. But anyways, I know you got a Costco, but you have to buy a membership. And that membership is for you to be served by Costco. Uh, I know before the pandemic uh, you had you had clubs that you were part of like fitness clubs that you were part of and so you are served by those clubs and what has happened is that that mentality has seeped into the church where just because you are a member at xyz church you feel like that church exists to serve you but if you are a follower of jesus if you are somebody like epaphroditus that you have been sold out to jesus that you say i'm a christian that idea of membership should be more like partnership that i am partnering alongside of the staff i'm partnering alongside of the leaders to serve the glory of god to advance his mission in the world that is epaphroditus And let me just say for those of you who are connecting online or in the parking lot, in the courtyard, if you don't know Jesus, I really do invite you into knowing him. He's the greatest thing on planet earth. He is in the process of, like I said, redeeming all things, redeeming your life. And when you trust in Jesus, when you put your faith and trust and your confidence in Jesus and who he is, not only does he transform your life, but he grafts you into this family. He grafts you into this body. He grafts you into this army that is so much bigger than yourself and you might be sitting there today and going you know what I'm, I'm still in the process of, of of searching and seeking here's the great thing about shoreline and here's what I know is that they have created an environment for you to belong before you believe to get a glimpse of that body to get a glimpse of that family we're part of something bigger than ourselves. And if you're a superstar, you realize that if you are a subtle superstar. Characteristic number two, you care more about others than you do yourself. The second characteristic of subtle superstars is that you care more about others than you do yourself. And so here's what we see of Epaphroditus. He, he almost died. He fell ill. So here, here's the picture. You have the church at Philippi sends Epaphroditus to where Paul is. Somewhere along the journey, he gets deathly ill. He didn't catch COVID because I don't think COVID was around at that point, but he caught something, became deathly ill, and almost died. So he had, he had not made it to the Apostle Paul yet. So he sends a letter back to the church at Philippi and just say, hey, I've gotten held up. Yeah, I've, 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 I've become sick. I'm, I'm sitting here. And, and all Epaphroditus could do when he was sick is think about the church at Philippi and think about the Apostle Paul. He didn't even think about his sickness. In fact, uh, scholars think that he continued on in his journey even when he was sick, which is why he almost died. He didn't take care of himself. Now, I would like to tell you that I'm selfless when it comes to being sick and that I care more about what's happening to others than I do myself, but that is not true. I remember growing up, my mom, she was a school teacher. My dad owned a business. And so if I got sick, my mom would drop me off at grandma's house. Now, let me tell you what my grandma did whenever I would come to her house and I was sick, as she gave me a bell. And she's like, honey, if you need anything, you just ring that bell and grandma will come or run it. And so as, as a young boy, I would go to her house, I would turn on Three Stooges, I'd be watching Three Stooges, and then I'd get hungry. And so I had this bell and I would... Ring that bell, and Grandma comes a-running in there. What do you need, sweetie? I say, well, Grandma, I would love to have some oatmeal, and I would also love to have some cinnamon toast in that oatmeal. I know what you're trying to think. That must be a weird southern thing. I don't even think it's a weird southern thing, but if you ever eat oatmeal like that, you will not eat oatmeal unlike any, you will not eat oatmeal the same again because it is absolutely phenomenal. So, so toast some, you know, toast, you know, put butter on it and put cinnamon and sugar and then break it up and put it in your oatmeal. 
Unbelievable. Well, so she would do that. And then I would, you know, get thirsty. I'd ring the bell. She'd come in there. She'd give me something to drink. Well, my mom adopted the bell too. So whenever I was sick and I'm in my room upstairs, uh, my mom's like, just ring the bell and I'll come and run because we didn't have text messaging at that point in our life. And so I just ring that bell. Mom comes running up the stairs. What do you need, baby? And I, so, I mean, I'm telling you, I, I, I was in hog heaven. That's what we say in the South. Hog heaven. This is awesome. I had my grandma, my mom tending to my every need. Well, when I got married over 17 years ago and I got sick the first time, I asked Joni where her bell was. There's no lie. And uh, she's like, I'll ring your bell. I'll ring it. Yeah, you want a bell? I'll ring your bell. And so uh, I just don't do well when I'm sick. Like I actually uh, contracted COVID back last summer and I got really sick. Now, for the first couple of days, you, you know, my wife didn't have, I mean, she had no sympathy or empathy for me because she thought I was faking. Well, but by, you know, day four, five, and six, I wasn't getting any better. And I, I'd, I'd be in the bedroom. I'm all covered up, you know, because I, I have chills. I have a fever. And my wife's a nurse. And so, and, and she's not a very gracious nurse when it comes to me. She's gracious to everybody else. She'd come in our room and she'd just rip off those covers. She's like, you don't need covers on you. You have a fever. It's right. I'm like, I'm cold. She's like, I don't care. And so I'm constantly thinking about myself when I'm sick. Epaphroditus, subtle superstars, they constantly think about others. I want to give you this imagery. Subtle superstars are not bell ringers. They're bell hops. Subtle superstars aren't bell ringers they're bell hops see don't if you are a child of the king now if you're still trying to figure out this jesus thing this church thing we really want to serve you we want to be here for you but here's the here's the kind of church we we want to be we want to be a church of bell hops not bell ringers people that are attentive to other people's needs so could you imagine that kind of church where basically everybody is serving one another because they're bell hops and they're constantly listening for the bell so that they can serve that's Epaphroditus that's a subtle superstar characteristic number three is this if something happens to you people know that it would be a huge loss People know that it would be a huge loss. Here's what the Apostle Paul says in verse 27. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but also on me to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Paul is saying, this man, if something happened to this man, there would be this huge gap in my life. And I would have sorrow upon sorrow if Epaphroditus wasn't here. And I can honestly say that when I think about my wife, and we've been married over 17 years, uh, (laughs) there would be this huge gap in my life if Joni Laxton was not in it. First and foremost, I don't even know if our children would get fed. That, that would be number one. Now, I know our children would have plenty of clothes because I love shopping. For you men, don't pull my man card. But anyways, I know that they, I know that they, would, they would have clothes, but I don't know if they would get fed. I, I don't know how clean the house would be. I think we would probably be poor because I don't even know the passwords to our bank account. So I've, I've actually told Joni, hey, will you please put the passcode just in case something happens to you and I need to access our bank account. That would be, that would be glorious. Uh, you know, but I just really look at all the ways that my wife serves Caleb, Ellie, and Luke. All the ways that my wife serves me. All the ways that my wife serves the church. Like she gets, she gets emails and phone calls from uh, leaders in the student ministry saying, hey, can you get coffee? Can I come over to your house and just share? I mean, I'm telling you, if the world uh, did not have Joni Laxton, I'm telling you, there would be this huge gaping hole. I know in my own life, kids' life, and those that are around my wife. Well, the same thing applies here to Epaphroditus. Let me ask you, and I've asked this question. I ask this question to me all the time. God forbid if something happened to me, would people miss me? Not just my presence, but what God does through me. Ask yourself that question. If you, if you consider Shoreline your family, 
God forbid if something happened to you or if you move away, would there be this huge gaping hole where they go, oh my gosh, I, I sorrow upon sorrow because I don't know what we're going to do with Keith. He's gone. I don't know what we're going to do with Patty. She's gone. What? That was what Paul thought of Epaphroditus. The fourth characteristic of a subtle superstar is that people celebrate and honor you. People celebrate and honor you. Verse 28 says this, Therefore, I am all the more eager to send Epaphroditus to you so that when you see him again, you may be glad and I might have less anxiety. So then welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor people like him. Paul is building up those like Epaphroditus. That's what he's doing because he understands that he could not do what he did. He couldn't do the ministry. He couldn't be part of the mission of God without people like Epaphroditus. And so he's eager to share Epaphroditus back with the, his home church. And he's telling them that when Epaphroditus gets there, you need to receive him with joy. You need to celebrate him and you need to honor him. See, this is one of the great things that I've learned about Shoreline in just my uh, little time getting to know you is that you celebrate subtle superstars. I've seen it here on stage. Uh, I've seen it in uh, the, the, the time before uh, the, the gathering. I've also seen it this week. Uh, Pastor Dennis, uh, many of you know him. He's served Shoreline Church for 20 years. And so this past week at an E-team meeting, they celebrated and they honored Pastor Dennis. Can we just do that this morning and celebrate Dennis McFadden for all of his years of service? Subtle superstar type service. But there's other people. There's other people like George. George, he, he's on the drums. And if you, if you just, I, I would encourage you next time uh, George is on the drums, just watch him. He's smiling. I mean, it's gr I mean, big grin, big, I guess, California smile as he's hitting those drums for the glory of God. But he was serving Shoreline before he came on staff. And so they saw the subtle superstar quality in George. And they said, hey, you're already doing it. Won't you come on staff and I can like I said I could go uh, from example after example but it's those of you who do the fa uh, who, who do the food pantry it's those of you who do the clothes closets it's those of you who set up and tear down you are the subtle superstars and we honor you I remember when I was pastoring in Louisville Kentucky uh, we didn't call our volunteers volunteers we actually called them towel holders because it was after it was after John 13 and and we had this tagline the ministry of the towel should make the world go wow and so every person who would sign up to be a volunteer, or we called them a towel holder. We gave them a towel with our mission and our vision on it. And it was signed by all of the staff because we wanted to celebrate them. Throughout the year, we would have towel holder rallies where it was a time for fun and leadership development. And then we would have subtle superstar Sundays where we would honor them. You see, Shoreline does very uh, many things that are similar to that. Why? Because we celebrate and we honor those of you who are subtle superstars. Paul says that is a characteristic, is that people celebrate and honor you. The last characteristic is this of subtle superstars, is that they give their life for the cause of Christ. They give their life for the cause of Christ. So Paul kind of wraps up this about Epaphroditus. And he says, honor people like Epaphroditus because he almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life. That word risk means that he hazarded his life to make up for the help you yourselves could not give me. What does Paul mean by that? What he means is that not everybody from the church of Philippi was called to do what Epaphroditus did. 
So when the church at Philippi, they're talking to their, they're talking to their fellowship, they're talking to their family, and they're like, hey, we want to send some needs, and we want to meet some needs of Paul. We want to send somebody from our fellowship to go and join Paul. Anybody? Anybody out there? Anybody want to go? Then you have this guy in the back, Epaphroditus says, I'll go. I'll go. And see, Epaphroditus, he didn't sign up because he wanted sky miles. <laughs> he didn't sign up in a day and age where he could get on a plane and go to where the Apostle Paul was. He couldn't even get an Uber. There wasn't trains. It was going to be a dangerous and tumultuous journey to get where the Apostle Paul was. But Epaphroditus says, no one else will go. I'll go. I'll risk my life for the cause of Christ. And see, when, even when Paul writes the letter back saying, honor such men, you know, see, Epaphroditus didn't seek the recognition. He didn't, like, tell, tell Paul, hey, hey, when I go back, can, uh, can you slip them a note that says, honor me? No, that, why? Because he had given his life to Christ. It was about Christ. It wasn't, it wasn't about that he wanted to make a name for himself there at the church of Philippi. He didn't want to make him, uh, himself a name in church history, in the annuals of church history. No, he was a man who wanted to die, who wanted to give his life for King Jesus. Now, I remember when I was 17 years old, I had been called into ministry, which I was still trying to figure out what that meant. But I was called into the ministry at, at age 14, the summer I was about to turn 15. And I remember when I was getting ready to graduate, 17 years old, I told, I told my mom and dad, I said, uh, this will probably be it. I probably won't be back. And my mom, she's all teary-eyed, what, Josh, why? I said, because you, you, you raised me to love Jesus. And I'll go anywhere Jesus calls me to go. I'll do anything that Jesus calls me to do. And one of the very reasons why I am literally standing on a stage in Monterey, California, is because when I was 17 years old, I said, I'm going to give my life to the cause of Christ, serving His church in whatever capacity He wanted me to. And I'm from Mumford, Tennessee. You're like, where's that? That's what I mean. Yeah, I'm from Mumford, but yet I'm here in Monterey. Oh, it's amazing. Why? Because I said yes to Jesus. I mean, is that, is that what you've done? Yes. Jesus, I'll, I'll do what you call me to do. I'll go where you call me to go. I'll serve in the areas that you call me to serve in. Here I am. So those are the five characteristics of subtle superstars. And I, want, I, I normally don't do this in a message, but it was, there, there's so many things in this passage. I want to give you three takeaways that tie into every one of these characteristics. The first takeaway is this, is that you mirror your master. You, when it comes to serving, you mirror your master. We actually see this in Philippians 2. Paul writes this, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. You see, the reason why Epaphroditus had those five characteristics is because those five characteristics were characteristics that Jesus embodied. Epaphroditus mirrored his master. The second takeaway I want us to, to, to take with us today is the importance of your mission determines the intensity of your service. The importance of your mission determines the intensity of your service. And let me just say it this way. The mission of God reaching people far from Jesus who don't know Jesus, inviting them into the family of God and seeing them be conformed more into the image of Jesus. That is the greatest mission on planet Earth. It's the greatest mission on planet Earth. And if we are a child of the King, 
That most important mission should determine the intensity of our service. If we truly believe that is the greatest mission to be part of, then we will give. I mean, that's why people say, why you yell so much? I'm just passionate about King Jesus. He changed me when I was eight. I've not gotten over it yet. And so that's, the, that's what I'm saying. The intensity in which we serve King Jesus is really determined by the importance we see in the mission. The last takeaway is this. Oh, this, this is my favorite. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is his favorite. This is his favorite. Here it is. A movement only goes as far as its movers. A movement only goes as far as its movers. You see, what God is doing in Shoreline and what he's been doing at Shoreline for the last 26 years is what I would call a movement. And it's, and it's people like you all sitting out here listening online in the parking lot. You are the movers advancing the movement of Shoreline. It's not Pastor Howie. It's not Pastor Kevin. It's not the E-team. It is you. You are the movers advancing the movement. But a movement only goes as far as its movers. And so as I wrap up, You can, if you are not, you can become a subtle superstar. There's at least three areas that you can get plugged in. And here they are real quick. So this is application right here. These are three areas. So if you're already a subtle superstar in in these areas, we honor you. We celebrate you. If not, here are some areas. One, there are areas of necessity like children's ministry, youth ministry, uh, parking, greeting, uh, set up, tear down. Those are areas of necessity. If we didn't do those things, we wouldn't be able to reach people. Those are areas of necessity. Then there's areas of nurturing. Those happen in the small group setting. Those happen in the classes where we care for one another. We love on one another. We listen to the needs of one another and seek to meet those needs. So areas of necessity, areas of nurturing. And then the third area is natural areas or areas that are are natural to you. So if it's singing, sing. If it's beating the drum like George, beat the drum like George. If it's teaching, if it's leading a small group, if it's in, you know, some area of outreach that you're just passionate about, it's just natural to you. So areas of necessity, areas of nurturing, and areas that are just natural. We do realize that God wants to do immeasurably more in and through us than we could ever ask, think, or imagine. And the way he does immeasurably more is by subtle superstars who are engaged in humble service. So here's my question to you. Here's my question to me. Here's my question to us. Are you a subtle superstar? Because behind every great movement, our sacrificial partners engaged in humble service. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your great love. Thank you for your word, how it shapes and molds us, how it brings conviction, how it challenges us to literally embody and reflect our King, our King Jesus. Father, I pray for Shoreline. I pray for the next 26 years. Father, will you fill Shoreline with subtle superstars? who are engaged in humble service because those those superstars, those subtle superstars are who you use for your glory and your mission in the world. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, let's uh, thank Josh once again. Josh, thank you. Wonderful message. Great reminder to each and every one of us. So before we send you out and uh, conclude our worship services this morning, I want to just give you a couple of announcements. Uh, First of all, uh, for those of you that continue to give either online or here in the courtyard to the work of Shoreline Church, we just want to say thank you for your consistent and faithful giving to the work of Shoreline uh, to not only be a blessing here in our local community, but as Jesus said, to the ends of the earth, to go to the ends of the earth with the message of Jesus. So thank you for your giving. If you are here today, whether in the courtyard or whether you're down here in the parking lot, of course, at the exits and the entrances, we've got the offering boxes uh, for you to, if you'd like to give in person, you can do that. Or if you'd like to connect and start to maybe give, take a first step towards giving to the work of Shoreline, we invite you to just send us an email and we'll help you get connected to take that first step in giving. 
Uh, exciting news today at 1 o'clock, uh, just a little while, uh, we are offering a baptism class, an online baptism class. So if you are a follower of Jesus Christ and you've not yet uh, been baptized, we want to invite you to consider being part of that class that starts today online at 1 o'clock. It'll be led by Pastor Roy. And we are excited because February's night of worship we are praying and hoping to have a baptism service as part of that night of worship. So will you be praying for us? And if you've not yet been baptized, you'd like to take that step, that public declaration of your faith in Jesus Christ, we invite you to that. You can do so by going to our website, of course, or you can send an email to baptism at shoreline.church. And Pastor Roy will look forward to meeting with you at 1 o'clock online. For prayer, for those of you that are online, if you've got a, a maybe a great joy in your life or even something that you're walking through you'd just like prayer for, we want to invite you to go ahead and send us an email at prayer at shoreline.church. And for those of you that are here in the courtyard or maybe down even in the parking lot, if you'd like prayer this morning, Pastor Dennis is up there on the dock. He's waving. He and his team are ready. Uh, they're ready and uh, willing, and they love to pray with you, so I invite you to join them up there. And then finally, if you're new today, whether you've joined us online for the first time or you're here in the courtyard or in, down here in the parking lot, thank you for being here today. Thank you for joining us. It's such a great joy. If you were with us online, if you would do us the honor by texting the word welcome to the number 831-221-0290, and we've got a digital connection card. We'd like just to get to know you a little bit better. And then if you're here in the courtyard or the parking lot, would you please stop on back there where the balloons are? That's where Patty and her team are ready. They'd love to just say uh, welcome, and they have a special gift they'd like to give to you. And thank you for coming. So as you go from this place, would you go in the power and the grace and the love of Jesus, the one who came not to be served but came to serve, and would you go in his joy and in his peace? Amen? Amen. God bless you, and have a great rest of your weekend.